Today we're going to be doing another bulk file tutorial all about how to use bulk files to adjust placement percentages. And this is going to be another really quick one for you because bulk files are the most scalable way to be able to efficiently and effectively manage your placement percentage adjustments inside of your sponsored product campaigns. But you got to know the formatting and you got to know how to do it. And that's what we're going to be walking through step by step today. All right. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go into your ad console and you're going to need to download a bulk file. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. So you're gonna go into your account, you're gonna go into your ad console, you're gonna pop open this menu item right here and you're gonna click on bulk operations, which is going to bring you to this screen. And there's two things you need to do when you're going to request this file. The first one is to select the date range. So this date range right here is going to determine what information is in your file and for certain optimizations, so I just filmed one on how to add SKUs into existing campaigns and ad groups inside your account, that one, the date ranges may not matter all that much. However, whenever you're doing any sort of analysis of the data to look at the performance metrics, which is what you want to do when you're optimizing your placement percentages, you absolutely want to select a specific date range. Now the date range you're going to select here is going to be whatever dates you would like to analyze. My recommendation is typically say looking at the last 30 days worth of data. By default, it's only going to be for yesterday. So you definitely want to change that. You probably don't only want to look at yesterday's data. So you can select say 30 days, 60 days. If you are dealing with potentially a little bit more volatility in your account, or if recently the performance has really started to degrade in your account, then it might be useful useful to check a shorter date range in that case, but most likely that's going to be at least the last seven days. In this case, I'm going to select 30 days here. Now, the other thing that we need to do is we need to select what information we would like to have in this file. So the first thing you always want to do is you want to check this campaign items with zero impressions. If this is left unchecked, then any items within your account, meaning keywords, products, or data points that have zero impressions on them, they will not be included in your file which can create issues and leave things left out that you're unaware of. So you definitely make sure that is checked and then we can leave that. So placement data for campaigns. Yeah, we want that in there. The other thing you can uncheck is the sponsored brands data, sponsored display data, guidance for sponsored products and sponsored products search term data that we don't really need. We're only going to be looking at sponsored products data. Now, there's really no issue if you want to leave all of these. These will show up as additional tabs in your report. That doesn't really matter, but unchecking these makes the file smaller and seeing as we're only going through and looking at our placement percentages, which are in our sponsored product ads, which is why we're selecting sponsored products data, we can make our file a lot smaller, which should be easier to use on also should take a little bit less time to generate. But again, if you want to leave the other items completely up to you. But once you have, you know, again, what date range you want to select and the items you want contained in your file, you'll click create spreadsheet for download. You will see it start to populate here and it will say, you know, it's processing. And then once it's available, you'll see this blue download option, which we will click and you will open it up in whatever spreadsheet software you prefer. All right. So this is what the file should look like or something like this. Here I have some additional tabs and there's also a portfolio tab, but what you want to do is go to the sponsor products campaign tab. So what I'm going to show you is how to filter for, to find all of the placement percentages across your entire account, which should take you a couple clicks of a button and then what formatting you need to do when you're making adjustments, when you want to make changes to those placement percentages. And then also some tips on you know, maybe formatting or how you want to store your files. And then we'll go through what it looks like to upload them. All right. So I already have created a filter across my entire spreadsheet. You want to be able to do that because we're going to filter to find the actual placement percentages. And then I also like to freeze this top row in my spreadsheet. It makes it a little bit easier to work with. So when you're scrolling, you don't forget what column you're on. But the first thing you want to do is go to entity here. You're going to drop open your filter. 
clear it out and we're looking for something called bidding adjustments. Bidding adjustments is the entity name for placement percentages. Now, I'm just going to go through the specific formatting on this exact task of adjusting placements. If you want more understanding of bulk files or if you want to understand the entity column or you know how to make bid adjustments, launch campaigns, there's a wealth of things you can do with bulk files. Definitely recommend checking out our other content on the channel. We put a lot on bulk files. But for right now, all you need to know is go to the entity column sort and filter to find the bidding adjustments, that's going to give you the information you need. So as we scroll over, there's gonna be a couple things that are going to be important for you when it comes to the analysis. The first one is going to be the campaign name. Basically, what is the name of this campaign? Ideally, if you have really good campaign naming structures, which we also have a video out on the channel for that, as well as a resource. Again, if you want to go and check that out, you definitely want to make sure naming and why naming is so important is for instances like this, you want to be able to understand what is my goal with this campaign, right? Um, so that will be helpful to understand. You also can see the portfolio name. If you have sort of grouped your campaigns inside of portfolios, that might be helpful. Again, we're trying to understand what are we trying to accomplish with this campaign because that can inform if we want to do placement adjustments or other things that you might find helpful is also, this is actually something that Amazon has up updated, which I highly appreciate. It's actually carried over the bidding strategy for these campaigns. And why this can be helpful to know the bidding strategy is I do not, do not recommend setting placement percentage adjustments on dynamic up and down bidding. It is not a good practice. What can happen is because you are entering a variable of dynamic up and down bidding, which can up to double your bid. And if you put a placement percentage adjustment on top of that, the variable of how much your bid can increase can get exponential and likely quite scary. And it can just lead to overbidding, poor performance, and it's really hard to control what's going on at a bid level because there's so much room for Amazon to increase your cost per clicks there. So we have never seen that perform well. And so that would be one thing you would definitely want to analyze when you're looking at making placement percentage adjustments. Other things that are helpful is this placements column right here. This is going to tell you the name of the placement. So you can see top of placement top, placement product page. Hopefully those are pretty self-explanatory. That's your top of search and your placement percentage adjustment. And also, so this is a slightly old file. This one doesn't show rest of search, but if you download a more recent file, you should also see rest of search placement percentages in this placements column. And so that would of course apply to the rest of search adjustment. Now, the other things that will be helpful when analyzing, is this something that should increase the placements? And of course, these columns are very important when it comes to, you know, again, what date ranges we've selected. So the, the data in here is going to be for if I selected a 30 day date range when I generated the file, this information is what my performance metrics were over the last 30 day span. And so if I know that there's this is the last 30 day performance on this, then I know I'm making adjustments off of that. And that's why I said if you have maybe recently you've seen a degrade in the performance, you might want to be checking, okay, so what's the most recent performance? Because if I'm looking over longer date ranges, then maybe you no know, performance was great and more recently it's not performing as well. And so that's why selecting the date range is actually really important when it comes to doing analysis like this. All right. So I'm going to give you some like quick options and things that you might want to look at. So in this placement percentage, this is actually what we'll be changing to either adjust or potentially add a placement percentage adjustment here. And so if I go to percentages and I uncheck this zero here, that is essentially getting rid of all of the placements that have no adjustments set on them. And as you can imagine, this is why it's so helpful and so scalable because if you're trying to make placement percentage adjustments inside of your account, you have to click into every single campaign, do the analysis, and then be like, oh, wait, did I set placements on this? Wait, are the placements performing? And you have to go and check and click around. And it's really tedious to optimize these at scale. And that is the power of bulk files to be able to optimize things on a massive scale very efficiently and be very confident of your optimizations as well because of course they're providing the performance metrics here. So most likely what I would 
would want to do is you know, kind of isolate the things that do have placement adjustments. And maybe I want to sort by a cost, or maybe I want to look at whatever has poor ROAS here, but I'm basically looking for the things that are underperforming. So as you can see, we have a 20% top of search placement adjustment here. And our a cost for this top of search is 614%, which is not ideal. Let's be honest. So that's probably something we should adjust. Now I will tell you that just because the A cost for the top of search is 614% does not mean that the entire campaign has 614%. What this means is that my top of search placement is 614%. So you know how when you go into your campaign manager and you're analyzing it and each individual placement percentage performance reflects again only how that one individual placement is running and that doesn't necessarily line up with the campaign a costs and performance metrics or the individual targets performance that's exactly the same thing here and so that's what we're looking at so it's not necessarily that everything is running at this high of a cost but it is a lot and so in these cases if we have things that are underperforming i probably do not want to keep the placement percentages on here I should probably decrease that because I don't want to spend more for things that are underperforming. And so to make these changes, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. And that leads me to how I recommend you keep track and upload bulk files in your account. Because there's two ways I could do this. And I prefer the second way. The first way is I could simply make changes in this account. So actually the formatting for this is very simple. One other thing to note is inside of bulk files is that the percentages are, are represented in whole numbers. So if, for example, you see a 20 here, that means it's a 20%, not a 200%. Because if we were to convert this to a decimal, if we were to convert it to a percentage, you would see that this is actually 2000%. Um, that is incorrect. So it is actually just a 20% here. So what I would need to do to make this a zero is I'm going to put a zero here. Um, you can see there's a hundred here. So this is represented as a hundred percent, which can go all the way up to 900% because that is the maximum placement percentage increase you can put in your account. And so what I could do is say, okay, I need to get rid of this. So I'm going to put a zero here. And then the other formatting that I would need to do to enact these changes is in the operations column. I need to put update. Update is the operation you specify when you you say, hey, I would like to make a change to something existing in my account currently. And again, if you want to understand the operations column, got a whole video on it because it's the thing that trips most people up if you're used to the old version of bulk files. However, that's all I would have to do. I would make the change, I would put update in the operations column, and then I could upload this entire file. And unless you have an operation specified in the operations column, it's not going to make changes to anything else in the account, even if I accidentally entered something here. If I bump this one, as long as I don't put in update, in the operations or any operations specified, it's not going to make those changes. However, bulk files are great to keep records. And so my recommendation when going to make any sort of changes is instead of making changes to your original file, I would recommend copying the header as well as the individual rows that contain the things that you would like to make changes on. For example, maybe all of these things that are, say, above 100% A cost, I would like to completely remove all of the placement percentages from these. What I would do is I'm going to copy again. You need to copy the header, and then I'm going to copy these individual rows, and I'm going to open up a brand new spreadsheet, and then I'm going to only have the rows that I'm making changes on here and then upload this file instead of the original file. Why this can be very useful is oftentimes you want to keep a record of what the settings were originally and you can keep that in your existing file as well as it condenses the view and it's very easy to understand these are the exact items I made changes on. Instead of going back to the original file and maybe sorting the operations column, you can get very specific here. And so in this case, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to put zero here. And then I'm going to put update 
in my operations column. And that is it. That's all I have to do. The last thing that I'm going to have to do to actually make these changes is I will go and upload these into the account. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But I also want to show you what other things you might do in terms of changing. So I showed you how to find all the stuff that you already have a placement percentage adjustment on and maybe want to make some other adjustments to. The other thing that you can do is either look at only the things that don't have placement percentage adjustments. And maybe I want to sort by things that have the most sales. And then I'm going to be looking at the A cost. Let's say for argument purposes that this 30 up oh, Let's see, this 36% ACOS is something that I want to promote. You can see that this is in product pages. I would also recommend checking, ideally your campaign name gives you some idea of the strategy and targeting that's in this campaign. And so again, you should be making good decisions here. I don't recommend putting excessive placement percentages and in some cases, not at all on things like auto campaigns, potentially broad match as well. The potential for those to underperform with really aggressive placement percentages is quite high. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. But let's say we wanted to make a change here. So again, what I would do is I'm going to copy it. I'm going to put it in my original or in my final upload. You do absolutely need to make sure that your columns line up and that everything is correct. If, for example, I ended up doing something incorrectly and I like copied and pasted it in the wrong row, that is going to create errors. It needs to absolutely line up in the columns. Trust me, I've done that whole copy and paste issue before and that's why I know that is really easy to do. So I wanna caution you against that. So what I would do in this case is instead of the zero, cause that's what we have here, maybe I wanna put a more conservative placement adjustment here. So if I wanted to do 10%, I would put 10. If I wanted to do 20%, I would put 20, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to 900%. And that is, is essentially all you have to do. So you can go analyze your placement adjustments. As you can imagine, it can be very helpful to do it at scale. So again, maybe when we want to sort by spend, go through and analyze it. Other workflows might be to copy you know, everything that has high amounts of spend, maybe put, pop it in here into this existing spreadsheet, and then maybe just delete the rows that you're not making changes on and you can work flow through it that way as well. But either way, once you're done, once you've made the placement percentages you'd like, you made sure to specify create in the operations column. All you're gonna have to do is download this file. Although one last tip for you, when it comes to your name and conventions to save your spreadsheets, it's gonna be very, very easy going to be very easy for you to simply make a new spreadsheet and not name it like I was about to do with this untitled spreadsheet. And then when you go back and you're like, wait, what did I do again? I don't remember. I'm trying to reference my changes. You're not going to be able to find it. So a very good rule of thumb is to take the original name of that spreadsheet download, which is a good idea to also name this well. So this is like bulk file demo. That's not a great name. I would recommend doing something like the name of the account. I would do the date range you downloaded it as well as the date range that is contained in the file. That is our typical naming. You might also put something along the lines of say bulk files or something. And then my recommendation is to copy the original name of your spreadsheet and then paste it in here so you can know that these two spreadsheets are associated. It makes it really great when searching. And then what I do is I put parentheses or maybe you want to put a colon. However you want to have your naming, but I like to put what the optimizations were done to this file. And then I also like to put the date that I uploaded it. So for example, I would say placement adjustments, and then I'm going to say, okay, so it's today's date. And then I would just specify that. And then that way that gives me a lot of clarity as to say what I did with this file and the purposes of it. And it makes for really good record keeping and searching. But once I do make sure that that is done well, then I'm going to download this into my, I can download this. And then all I have to do is go back to my account. I'm mean, going again, you can either have those tabs still open or you can go to bulk uh, operations there. All you have to do is click choose file. Once you choose file, that is going to pop open a window. You can select that whatever the spreadsheet was that you downloaded. So all you'll have to do is select the file. You'll see it right here. And then you're going to upload to process changes, which these are not for this account. So I'm not going to do that. But once those are uploaded, you should see the file here and it should say finish successfully. If you're following the formatting that I was using, 
it should go through no problem. You'll see here, I was testing some stuff and sometimes that ends up with errors. And so in this case is there is a download report for the error file. I would recommend downloading that and it gives you a lot of information as far as troubleshooting. Um, but yes, I'm really excited to share this with you guys. This is honestly the most scalable and efficient way to manage placement percentages across your entire account. Um, so I hope this helps. And as always, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. And if you have any ideas for things that you were wondering or thinking about, about as to how bulk files could help you with them. Feel free to leave those in the comments as well and we'll make sure that we can get you tutorials on that. And as always, I will see you in the next one.